This is a Venn diagram. You will find this Venn diagram on your Schoology page underneath the portion of the unit of uh, cell cycle in meiosis. With a Venn diagram, the left-hand side, the left-hand circle, is going to correspond to cell cycle or mitosis, and the right side is going to be for meiosis. You will notice in the center there is a place for information that pertains to both mitosis and meiosis. So let's start with things that apply to both mitosis and meiosis. Both processes create new cells. Both processes involve the duplication or synthesis of chromosomes. We're going to double the chromosome number. And for both processes, the phase names are the same. That would be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, let's focus on mitosis. In mitosis, we only have one division that occurs. This differs from meiosis, where there are two divisions. We'll get into a little bit more about why there are two divisions, but the long story short of meiosis for two divisions is that we have to take that doubled number of chromosomes and cut it in half, and then cut it in half again so we can get haploid cells. We'll talk about haploid in a few moments. A key idea of mitosis is that mitosis creates two daughter cells that are genetically identical to one another. They are absolute clones. So your liver cells, kidney cells, etc. are all clones of one another and they've all just undergone a process called differentiation so that they could become a particular cell. But the big thing with mitosis is they are genetically identical. This again differs from meiosis because in meiosis we're going to create four sister cells. We're calling them sister instead of daughter because they are genetically different from one another. So four sister cells, each genetically different, is an outcome of meiosis. Four cells, genetically different. Again, mitosis describes all somatic cells. Somatic is just a fancy word for body cells. So some examples are hair, kidney, heart, skin, etc. Meiosis, on the other hand, occurs only in sex cells, specifically sperm if you are a male, egg if you are a female. Mitosis is associated with growth and asexual reproduction. Because it is asexual, it means that all the cells that are created will be genetically identical and clones of one another. This is a key difference in meiosis. At meiosis, what happens is it's associated with sexual reproduction. And so because of that, we end up with a varying gene pool, meaning we have organisms that look different from one another. This aids later in evolution when we talk about the process of something called natural selection. With mitosis... We have, a, we have no pairing of homologous chromosomes. It just simply isn't necessary. What we need to just simply do is take the genetic information, double it, and then split it. In meiosis, though, we need to make sure that we end up with haploid cells at the very end. And so having homologous pairs of chromosomes that line up to one another and divide from one another is an important piece. Because these homologs pair up, they end up becoming very close to one another in prophase. And therefore, a couple things occur. Number one, we can have a crossing over event. When crossing over occurs, we end up having genetic information from one chromosome get transferred onto another. The other thing that can occur or does occur is something called synapsis. And at the end, mitosis provides us with Diploid cells. What does that mean? It means we have cells that are genetically identical to each other and maintains the 2N chromosome number. So, for example, human beings have 46 chromosomes. 
When a mitotic division occurs, we end up with two cells with 46 chromosomes. And lastly here, with meiosis, we end up in meiosis creating haploid cells. What does that mean? Well, we symbolize that by saying it's 1N. But the, the thing I want you to realize is that the outcome is that the chromosome number is cut in half. And so what ends up happening, for example, if you're a human being, is human beings have 46 chromosomes again. But what we need to end up happening is we need to have sperm and egg that only have 23 chromosomes. So what happens is this. We have a duplication of chromosomes. 46 becomes 92. But as it says up at the top, there are two divisions in meiosis. So what happens is we go from 46 to 92, and then we'll do two divisions. One to go from 92 to 46. We take the homologous pairs and pull them apart. And then furthermore, we take the chromatids and pull them apart. So what we end up with is we end up with four genetically different cells with 23 chromosomes each, the haploid number. When will we restore 46? We'll restore it at fertilization when there's a creation of a human being.